When the news first broke that Final Fantasy VII was being switched from the N64 to the PlayStation, it was perhaps the first piece of writing on the wall that the N64 was under-equipped to deliver the next generation of epic RPGs that the Super Nintendo was known for. Sadly, not only this was a huge loss for Nintendo, it was almost a shot in the face as Square walked away from the N64 early on, and its wound that Nintendo never really recovered from. Now don't get me wrong, other developers tried to hash together role-playing games for the console, but it's fair to say that none ever reached the highs that many of us were expecting, or even hoping for. One of the developers to try their luck with the game genre was Konami, who in the summer of 1999 released Hybrid Heaven across the world after years of development and a huge amount of hype. It's strange to have seen a third-party game get as much hype as this, but heck, it was an RPG and we were desperate for something special. But before we go into the game, it's perhaps interesting to consider the mysterious history behind Hybrid Heaven. While it's never been officially confirmed or denied, there are strong rumours that Hybrid Heaven was indeed originally put into development to be the N64 version of Metal Gear Solid. And the early screenshots and videos of the game only helped to fan the fire in this sense. When the game was originally shown off, the action side for the game was much more prominent, and the early videos had a ton of stealth elements and mechanics shown off. There is also a strong rumour that Kojima himself single-handedly caused the game to change from being a Metal Gear Solid game, as he didn't want there to be confusion between the two games. You see, the rumour is that the early build and storyline of the game is that Solid Snake was investigating an underground lab where gene soldiers were being made. The sad truth is, we'll never likely find out the entire truth behind all of these rumours. But even if the game didn't turn out to be a full Metal Gear game in the series, the complex and confusing storyline still holds Kojima's fingerprints all over it, even if he was not credited as the game's writer. Hybrid Heaven is all about hybrids, hence the title. And these are a genetic human and alien cross hybrid race who live and operate from a huge underground base below the Earth's crust. Rather than coming to attack us in an all-out war, they instead plan to capture political leaders and replicate them with clones, to manipulate human history before coming to the Earth's surface to dominate. The game begins in the year 2000, and US President Weller is due to arrive in New York to sign an anti-nuclear weapons agreement with the Russian president. This is being reported on World News, and a Secret Service agent called Johnny Slater watches on, before he decides to answer the door stark bollock naked to a general who gives you your next mission brief. In the next scene, Johnny Slater is at a subway station and is fatally shot by Diaz, who is one of the hybrids. He then attempts to escape and sabotage the base, which is where the game takes place. However, this is where things get really confusing. You see, Diaz is actually the real Johnny Slater and when he shot and killed Johnny Slater, it was actually an evil clone of himself. Johnny had been under the control of the Gargantuans, who have tasked Johnny with rescuing the high-powered Super Navigator and taking down the Gargantuan traitor who first created the hybrid race. Add to this, you'll have to do all of this by Christmas in order to meet your distant girlfriend under the Christmas tree in New York as promised. If you have a headache right now, then you should have. I've played many games in my time and I can't think of one that confused me as much in its opening 7 minutes than this game did. Thankfully the storyline does become a whole lot less convoluted than this as it continues throughout the game, but you really need to grasp the basic storyline right off the bat in order to understand what's happening in the game, and sadly Konami didn't do a great job of this in the opening cutscene. The storyline wasn't the only game's problem though. Konami decided to add expansion pack support to offer a high res mode by way of full screen or letterbox. The problem is, I'd almost go as far as to say that the optional high res mode makes the game almost unplayable due to the extremely choppy frame rate they deliver in the game. Sure, things do look a little smoother and sharper, but the expansion pack is such an awful frame rate addition to the game, and it's a surprise they didn't drop this altogether. If you take my advice, this is a game to play without the expansion pack, so just play it in the standard resolution mode throughout. That's not to say the graphics aren't good, with the game taking place entirely in the underground alien base in winding corridors and small rooms, the console doesn't struggle with what are a limited and sometimes bland set of textures. 
On the plus side though, the whole game actually feels like a complete package, where each of the game's stages links together into a complete free-flowing experience. The real meat and bones of the game though isn't this awesome real-time battle system. For its time it was certainly unique, although it has been copied since and gamers seem to like its more fast-paced mechanics. When you enter combat you are still free to move around the environment, although you will have a lock on the enemy that you're up against. As you move around your opponent, a power meter will begin to rise. Naturally, the longer you leave this before attacking, the greater the power will be. You also have a stamina meter which wears down the longer the battle goes on, and when this starts to run low, you'll be more restricted as to which moves you can perform. Here's where the game gets interesting though. Unlike many traditional RPGs, you don't actually have any weapons or armour to upgrade. Aside from one or two weapons that you'll pick up as consumables, the entire game revolves around hand-to-hand -hand combat. In theory, when I heard this, I didn't think it would work, but I was very pleased to have been proven wrong. As you start the game with a basic set of kicks and punches, you'll learn new moves as you defeat enemies and gain experience. The more you develop your character, the more powerful and specific the moveset you'll gain. It's possible by the end of the game to have a moveset that allows you to attack almost every specific part of the body. Also, as you progress, you'll learn the ability to chain together custom-made combos which you can make yourself, and also unleash some epic hold moves which are pretty much all inspired from WWF finishing moves at the time. In a lot of RPG games, it is possible to level up a single aspect of your character and still take down almost all the enemies in the game. To get around this method, Konami implemented a system which upgrades specific parts of your body. For example, if you keep kicking your enemies, your legs will grow strong, but if you then need to punch an enemy, they will be underdeveloped and have little damage or impact. This results in you varying your moves throughout the game in order to balance out your character. Now don't get me wrong, I still think that kicks in the game are always much more powerful than punches, but this system takes away the battle fatigue I often find when I play other RPGs. The enemy designs are also really cool, if not a little eccentric and unique. As you get deeper into the base, you'll accidentally unlock all of the genetic hybrid test monsters that were being worked on, so you can expect a lot of diversity and some bizarre looking hybrids to battle against. Add to this a whole host of human characters throughout the base, and you have a perfect sci-fi setting which takes inspiration from the entire history of sci-fi, from its wacky looking 70s aliens to the more modern themes from movies like Alien. Aside from the opening cutscene, the rest of the game's cinematics are also excellently done. They don't all contain voice acting, but with or without the added effects, they drive the story forward at a nice pace, and there are some epic twists and turns as you attempt to complete your mission. The personal highlight for me was the Geiger-inspired Area 2, where you have to outrun a giant hybrid which has been created by a sadistic evil scientist who is intent on using you as a test subject. The camera moves in some awesome positions, and there are some truly, genuinely jumpy moments when the monster smashes through walls out of nowhere whilst hunting you down. Speaking of the camera though, for the most part, the camera does do a good job of keeping itself in the right place at the right time, but there are occasional moments where it will position itself in an awkward position that will make navigating the game a total pain. It's also prone to flipping, which when combined with the game's awful minimap, it can leave you backtracking unintentionally. Weaving itself throughout the game is some incredible music, but coming from Konami I wouldn't have expected anything less. The fully stereo set of effects and music are perfectly fitting to the sci-fi inspired themes of the game. There's an ever-present low bass line which is worked together with orchestral and occasional strings, and some almost futuristic chanting noises at times. When combined with the game's claustrophobic feel, it does help to create a sense of isolation and urgency. In the later areas of the game, when things turn visually darker and more sinister, the soundtrack morphs into something more sinister and epic. When battling, the sound effects are also superb, and when you smack a hybrid with a DDT, you get all kinds of awesome bone crunching sounds. The only disappointment was the diffuser gun sound, and it does sound about as powerful as a pocket fan. All in all though, Hybrid Heaven is a game which is unlikely to grip you at first. The confusing storyline can leave you at times wondering exactly what's going on, and the fact that the entire game takes place underground doesn't make it one of the more visually appealing titles on the system. But do give it some time. The sci-fi inspired themes are very well delivered by the game's finale, and if you're a fan of Kojima style character arcs, then Hybrid Heaven won't leave you disappointed. 
the battle mechanics are also unique and really make you think about how you're fighting rather than just churning out the same moves to defeat an enemy and on to the next battle. By the time you may really start to enjoy the game though, it's over far too quickly. There are 9 areas in the game and from start to finish you should expect to complete it in around 14 hours or so. There are some awesome individual moments in the game however, and if like me you find that you just don't have enough time to sink 60 plus hours into a modern RPG game, then Hybrid Heaven could just well be the game that you didn't have on your radar. For me it's perhaps one of the most underrated and overlooked titles on the system, and so if you haven't played it before give it a few hours and if you're still enjoying it then it's worth continuing with. I picked this up on day one as a kid and I enjoyed playing it just as much now as I did all those years ago. Hybrid Heaven really isn't a game that you hear all that much about these days, and so if you've played this before I'd love to know what your experience of it was like. Did you find that the storyline was as confusing as I did, and were you gripped with the frequent plot twists and turns? Or perhaps you felt it was just a quick cash in on gamers who are desperate for a good RPG on the N64? As always let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section down below, and until next time.